hello again everybody and in this video we are going to learn or we're going to focus on igneous rocks okay as I mentioned in the previous video rocks are classified by their origin okay and in this case for igneous rocks they form from molten material so for example we have lava here it is a very hot molten material and when it reaches the surface you know it originates from the deeper parts of the earth and then when it goes up and reaches the surface it actually becomes you know it experience a much cooler temperature um, compared to the deeper parts of the earth and these molten material will eventually cools down and solidify and become solid rocks as like these rocks that are uh, where this person is standing on okay so this process is very similar if you have a bottle of water like this all right a bottle of water and you just put it in a freezer and that water will solidify and become ice that is exactly the same process here with um, igneous rocks okay basically what you do is you change the temperature you drop the temperature then this molten or this liquid material will eventually become solid material okay so that's what igneous rocks um, igne igneous rocks are most commonly it's, it's the most common rock type on earth as all mantle and the oceanic crust and the most continental crust these are all made of igneous rocks okay now when you think about igneous rocks think about these processes here you have uh, volcanoes and volcanoes might have a, la a magma chamber underneath it and this magma chamber have a, a conduit and then this conduit actually allows the magma uh, travels from the deeper parts of the earth all the way up to the surface of the earth okay so that's what um, basically igneous rocks are strongly associated with volcanic activity and that is the reason why we always talk about magma and lava when we learn about igneous rocks okay so uh, igneous rocks form from the freezing or solidification of either magma or lava now do you know what the difference between magma and lava is okay so this is something that you need to know magma is actually molten rocks that are um, present inside the earth okay or below the ground okay and lava is actually a molten material the same material basically um, that has reached the surface of the earth so it is present above the ground Okay, so that's basically the main difference between magma and lava, and that is something that you need to know. So uh, if you're thinking about lava and magma and one is above the ground and the other one is below the ground, so we can actually subdivide the realm of uh, igneous activity into two realms. The first one is called the extrusive realm. Okay, so extrusive realms involve igneous rocks that crystallize on the Earth's surface okay um, and the type of rocks that we have in extrusive realm are called volcanic igneous rocks okay so this is an extrusive igneous rocks again this is a type of igneous rocks that form on the surface of the earth okay so here is an example from Hawaii where you can actually see the uh, flow of uh, lava on the surface and um, and as you can see here this picture as well um, basically when these lava when these hot lava cools down and solidify they will eventually become igneous rocks okay this is an example of uh, igneous rocks extrusive igne igneous rocks okay um, <clears throat> this is called basalt and basalt has a very a very distinctive uh, texture okay uh, the texture is called aphanitic texture and aphanitic texture means that it has a very very fine grain texture okay as you can see here these rocks right here it has a you know some light minerals that might be able to add you know that we might be able to identify with our naked eyes but most of these materials these especially these darker colored minerals that are present within this rock is so small it's so fine that 
our naked eyes cannot be, you know, cannot uh, are not able to distinguish between these uh, dark materials. Okay, so these minerals that are within these rocks are just too small to be seen by our eyes. So that's what we mean by affinitic texture when a rock have a very very fine grain texture. Okay, the small crystals of minerals that we see within these rocks. Uh, they occur due to fast cooling, okay? And again, fast cooling happens in extrusive realm, okay? So these rocks, you know, the, the, the flow of lava that you saw in the previous picture, they will cool very, very fast. Now, the fast cooling does not allow will not allow you know minerals to grow big and that is the reason why the products or the results will be a fine grain uh, extrusive igneous rocks just like this rock right here by the way this rock is called basalt okay all right um another thing um if it cools very very rapidly then it will be it will undergo very very fast cooling then there won't be any crystals that form okay so for example we have obsidian pumice or ash these are example of um, materials volcanic materials that underwent very fast cooling and again it is also part of extrusive realm because they form above the surface but we're going to be talking about this in a little bit more detail when we talk about volcanoes later on okay uh, this is an example of extrusive igneous rocks in new jersey okay so uh, we also have ancient lava which is about 200 and million 200 million years old at patterson great falls in new jersey Okay, so uh, here is Passaic River, and if you travel to uh, northern Jersey, especially in Patterson, there's actually a place called the Great Falls uh, in Patterson, New Jersey, and you can see that these uh, waterfall is actually underlain by an extrusive igneous rocks, which is called basalt. Now, the second realm in igneous um, processes is called the intrusive realm so we have extrusive realm which is everything that forms above the surface now the second one is the intrusive realms um, these involve uh, this realm involve igneous rocks that crystallize inside the earth okay and the type of rocks are called plutonic rocks okay so for example if this magma chamber this is also a hot molten materials but this magma chamber can also cools down eventually and solidify and when they do that it will be part of intrusive igneous rocks okay so again these are uh, the type of structures that can be associated with intrusive igneous rocks uh, the first one is batholite right here batholite you can imagine batholite as a magma chamber like a very huge body of igneous rocks uh, that form inside the earth Okay, and the second one is called dike. A dike is when you have um, a body of igneous rocks that actually cut across layers of sedimentary rocks like this. Okay, so these are different dikes right here. Okay, all right. So, and the last one is sill. The sill of, uh, or igneous sills, are bodies of igneous rocks that are parallel to sedimentary layers. So here is a sill. There's another sill right there. There's another sill right there. There's the reason why we call them sills is because as you can imagine, these are layers of sedimentary rocks right here that I'm numbering right here, right? And these sills are parallel to those layers, okay? Um, now, in contrast to um, extrusive rocks, um, the intrusive rocks actually form what we call as the phaneritic texture. Phaneritic texture is completely the opposite of uh, aphanitic texture because this texture consists of coarse grain texture. Okay, why do we call them? Uh, why do we call it a coarse grain texture? The reason for that is because all the minerals that we see in these rocks can be or are identifiable with our eyes okay so they are large enough to be seen by our eyes okay so um, the large crystals it means that 
these rock cools very slowly and slow cooling can only occur within intrusive realm meaning that it can only occur it can only occur inside the earth okay so the slow cooling actually allows this long time of cooling it actually allows the minerals to grow big and therefore it produces a very coarse grain texture something like this that we are looking at in this picture and again this picture actually represents a type of rock which is called granite okay basalt granite again this is something that i've already mentioned several times already in the uh, last several videos so you might want to know about this but anyway so let's continue with um batholit a batholit again this is a, a large igneous body that uh, form very deep inside the earth okay and a good example for batholit would be the granite batholit in mount rashmore right here this is a very famous place to visit um, <clears throat> the reason why we have this, well, I told you that batholit formed deep inside the earth, but of course, this example right here is already on the surface. The reason for that is because there is, um, you know, subsequent process such as erosional processes that actually remove, um, you know, the overburden rocks and allow these rocks to be exposed on the surface. Okay, so this is batholit. This is also another example of batholit in Sierra Nevada. And um, basically, most of these batholit are located in the western part of the United States. So, for example, these dark color regions here uh, represents the different types of batholit that we have in the western, in the west coast region, basically, right? So... <clears throat> Um, so that was batholit, and this one is an example of a dike. Okay, so I told you before that a dike is a, a body of igneous rock that cuts across existing layering of sedimentary rocks. And as you can see here, these are different layers of sedimentary rocks, and we're going to be talking about sedimentary rocks in the next video. But as you can see here, these are layers of sedimentary rocks, and these layers, these horizontal layers, are cut by this sill. Oh, I'm sorry, dikes. <laughs> Okay, so this is a dike that cuts across those horizontal layers. So again, this is another, uh, that was uh, an example of a dike. And in, on this slide, this is actually a nice example of a sill. Okay, so this is a sill right here. This is a real sill right here. So that is a sill, that's the top of the sill, and this is the bottom of the sill, the, one of the major sills in this picture. And as you can see here, it is parallel. Um, maybe this diagram right here will help you see it. Uh, they, uh, the sill bodies, they are um, predominantly parallel to the sedimentary bedding or the sedimentary layers uh, next to it, okay? So because they are sub-parallel to parallel, uh, to the sedimentary layers, therefore, we can consider it as a sill, okay, or a sheet-like igneous rock body that are parallel to existing layering of sedimentary rocks, okay? This is also another example of sill, a very nice example of sill right here that I'm highlighting right there. This is also, at the bottom picture, this is also another type of sill, Okay, and in New Jersey, we also have an example of sill. This is called the Palisade Sill. Okay, the Palisade Sill is located in the northern part of New Jersey. Um, in fact, if you travel across the Washington Bridge uh, to Manhattan, you actually are traveling through the Palisade Sill. Okay, so this is the Palisade Sills, uh, the view of Palisade Sill right here from Manhattan. And this river right in front of us right here is actually the Hudson River. Okay. So um, there you go. So the New, New Jersey, New York area has a great example of a sill, which is called the Palisade Sill. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and talk about the composition of magma or lava or the composition of the rocks itself, uh, igneous rocks. And based on the uh, chemical composition, we can actually subdivide um, igneous rocks into four 
Okay, in this case, this is four. One, uh, let's start with this one. Let's start with ultra mafic. That's the first one. The second one is mafic, and the third one intermediate, and fourth one is felsic. Okay, so <clears throat> these terms actually refer to different types of igneous rocks that have a different uh, silica composition. So ultra mafic magma has the least amount of silica. Um, content right here okay whereas felsic or silicic magma will produce rocks igneous rocks with the highest silica content about 70 to 80 percent of silica within the rocks okay so that's something that you might want to um, pay attention to again what is the term and what is the relative amount of silica content within these terms on the left side of your of the table Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, when we identify felsic, intermediate, mafic, or even ultra mafic rocks, we don't really need to actually take the sample and then put it in the lab. I mean, you can do that, but um, we can actually, it's, it's, it's relatively easy to identify it because the color of the rocks gives clues about their chemical composition. So for example, here is a very dark colored rocks, okay, and this is a very light colored rocks, okay. Typically, the dark colored rocks is mafic rocks, meaning that this rock has a very, very low uh, amount of silica, okay. Whereas this light colored rocks, okay, typically it is a felsic rocks. Okay, so this felsic rocks right here will create a much lighter colored rocks. Okay, so the silica content within these rocks will be higher than the uh, mafic rocks on the left. Okay, so this is again an example of basalt and this is an example of granite. These are two main rocks, main igneous rocks that I've already mentioned several times at this point. Okay, um, I love this picture. Uh, it is such a great analogy to actually um, learn about um, igneous rocks. This darker cat would, uh, this darker kitty would represent uh, mafic rocks, and these lightest, uh, the cat with the lightest color would represent the felsic rocks, and the grayish color <laughs> would represent the intermediate rocks. Okay. Again, um, the, the, the color of the rocks um, is actually a proxy of the chemical composition of the rocks itself. This is how we classify igneous rocks. Um, basically, there are, you know, generally there are six types, six main types of igneous rocks, okay? Now, we classify these rocks based on two criteria. First is the texture. As you can see here, we have fine grain and coarse grain texture. So everything on the left column here are fine grain igneous rocks and everything on the right column here represents the coarse grain igneous rocks. Okay, so that's the first criteria. And the second criteria that we use is the composition. Okay, so everything here at the uh, lowest, uh, at the bottom row right here, these are all mafic rocks okay and then everything at the top row they are all felsic rocks okay and of course the one in the middle is the intermediate rocks okay so the way we classify igneous rocks are based on those two criteria the first one is the texture and the second one is based on the chemical composition and then um, by looking at those two criteria it, we can actually come up with six different rock names okay so for example this is again granite granite would be a coarse grain felsic rocks whereas basalt would be completely the opposite it is mafic and um, uh, it is it is a um, fine grain and mafic rocks okay and um, you know similar classification um, is applied to the rest of the rocks right here the salt gabbro andesite diorite and rhyolite 
Okay, so that is um, the short video for uh, Igneous Rocks, and I'm going to be um, uh, seeing you again on the next video about sedimentary rocks. I'll see you there.